You know, I went to the inauguration of Donald Trump, which was one of the hardest days of my life, to be honest. I am consumed with that. (sighs) I was thinking Mm. about you that day. I was watching Mm. you more than I was watching Mm. Trump. First of all, I don't even know how you get past. You got three million more votes than the guy. I did, right. In my mind, you won the election. The Electoral College, I can't explain that. I don't under, I think it was for some farmer who felt uh, <laughs> that he was, his rights were going to be denied. But the majority of the people in the country voted for you. Right. You got the job done. Right. When you're standing there watching this guy, are, what the hell is going through your head? Are, are, are you just, I would imagine you were on antidepressants that day. <laughs> you know how, here's how I felt about it. I mean, obviously I was crushed. I was disappointed and I was really surprised because I couldn't figure out what had happened. And you hadn't even written a losing speech when you lost that. No, night. You had only no, had victory in mind. No. And, and every, everything was pointed in that direction. So when he's going to be inaugurated, I was going as a former first lady. Right. That was the reason I was there. I was no longer in the Senate. I I was a secretaries of state don't usually attend. So I was. But your go. sense of duty is yes. my husband was president. I was right. first lady. Right. And this is what we say to the country. There's continuity. That is exactly how I felt. And and a lot of people said to me, don't put yourself through that. Don't go. And I said, look, I ran for president because I love this country. I wanted to serve this country. I thought I would have been a really good president. I want him you would have to, been you would have been spectacular well, with I all your so. experience. Yeah, I hope foreign so. affairs. Yep, but would I, you be crushing NATO right now? I don't think so. No, no, we need them. But so I, you're but, standing up there. So, so I'm, I, I said to myself, I said to everybody who talked to me about it. Look, I hope he's going to be a better president than I think he will be. I'm worried about it, but I'm going to do everything I can. As I told him when I called him, you know that terrible night. Oh, you said, did call him Oh, that I night. did. I said, you know, I said, look, um, you know, Donald, I want you to be a good president. I will do whatever I can to help you. So, you know, we're in that period. Was he period. gracious or was he a sore winner? He was so shocked he couldn't, I mean, he, he could, could barely, barely form a sentence. He was as shocked as you. <laughs> right. He was more shocked than me, I think. <laughs> wow. Uh, but, he was shocked. Uh, yeah, he was shocked. <laughs> All right. And, and so when I got there, you know, go ahead, get out there. You, you put on the best face possible. And I'm, you know, Bill and I are sitting with George and Laura Bush. And then he started on that speech, which was so bizarre. And that's when I got really worried. I thought, wait a minute. If this isn't the, rational. It's not rational, but it's also not, it's not politics. It's not what a president does. A president is supposed to try to reach out to people who weren't for right. him or her. You're supposed to say, okay, I'm going to be the president of everyone, those who supported me and those who didn't, because we're going to pull the country together. I'd hope that I would hear a little of that. I didn't hear any of that. And then that carnage in the street and the dark dystopian vision, I was sitting there like just, wow, couldn't believe it. And George W. Bush says to me, well, that was some weird shit. Wow. (laughs) 